Right. All right, so, so far, everything we've said has been about protons, neutrons, electrons. I feel like you guys got a really good mastery of the makeup of an atom, what makes a proton, neutron, and electron. Everything we're going to do today is going to specifically deal with the electrons. Now, it will be complicated if we were also dealing with charges. But everything we're going to deal with today is going to be neutral. What does that mean? Sort of no charge. The protons and electrons are the same. same. So if I say it's neutral and I say any atom on the whole periodic table, what can you tell me? The number of electrons. And the number of protons. protons. Very good. Okay, everybody understand? So oxygen, O, has how many protons? on the top right. Everybody see that? Okay. And if it's neutral, it also has how many electrons? Eight. Okay, so everything we're going to be dealing with today is assuming neutral atoms. And so let's look at that. So that's the electron part. Now the second word, configuration. Configuration means where are you at? And so when I write the electron configuration for an atom, what I'm actually doing is I'm writing where is every single electron in that atom. Now let's think about Bohr's model. At the center, we have the what? The nucleus with the protons and the neutrons. And outside of it, we have orbits of electrons. Remember your merry-go-round? The electrons close to the nucleus have less, not, not gravity, but I like it, okay? It's all about how fast you're going. Anytime in physics or chemistry, it's about how fast you're going. It's how much energy you have. Here you have low or high energy. Low energy, here you have high energy. And if you had one out here, it would be even higher. Make sense? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to give a little number, a letter, and a, and a, and a looks like an exponent in math class called a superscript for every single electron for, for the atom. Okay, so here's what's cool. You always, hey, welcome, welcome. You always start the same. You always start the same. And I told you when I started this, it's like reading a book. Okay, this is a book we're, we're looking at in environmental science class. If I want to start reading this book, what do I do? If I want to start reading a Sand County Almanac by Otto Leopold, what am I going to do? Not a trick question. Open it up. I'm going to turn to page one. Where? 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 Top on the left. Okay, everybody. Say, I mean, I'm, I'm, I know this is kind of silly, but if you can read a book, you can do electron configuration. Because instead of reading a book, we're going to read that periodic table. Where do you think we're going to start? On the top, on the left. And when I read a line, where do you think I'm going to go? From left to right. And when I get to the end of the line, where do you think I'm going to go? All the way on the next line, all the way to the left, all the way to the left, to the right. Exactly. You're going to read that periodic table just as if you were reading a book. And it's also the reason the periodic table is shaped so weird. You know, if you look at a periodic table up there, it seems like maybe it should just be a rectangle and have everything in there. Why, why are there less things at the top than at the bottom? Why, why do you have these different shapes? You're about to find out. It has to do with the energy of the electrons. Okay, so let's let's talk about the three things that we can say about each electron. First off, you can have three. Like I said, you need a, a number, a letter, and a superscript about every single electron. The first number is going to be your energy level. This 
This is how far you are from the nucleus. One is going to be close to the nucleus. Seven is going to be far from the nucleus. Seven is as high as you can go. Anybody look at a periodic table and tell me why, what, where am I getting these numbers if seven is the highest you can go? Welcome, welcome. Look at the periodic table. Anybody see a magic number seven that only goes up to seven? How many columns? Co not columns. Rows. How many rows, you guys? See these black numbers all the way to the left? All the way to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everybody see that? The numbers, the energy level tells you what row you're on. The number of the row. The number of the row is the energy level that you're on. So one, if I'm on the first energy level, that means I'm on the top row. Am I good? Second is going to be your shape of your orbital. Now I use S because that's the first one. S is going to be the shape of your orbital, and we only have three that we're going to talk about. There's actually four, but we're not going to talk about the fourth one. We're, we only have three that we're going to talk about. The three shapes are S, which is a sphere. Let me spell things right. Sphere. P, which is kind of an infinity sign or a dumbbell. And then D, which I've heard people call a flower. So, or like two infinity signs. Okay? Sphere, obviously, two dimensional looks like a circle. Three-dimensional, it's a sphere. Okay? Now, how do I know where I'm at on the periodic table for S, P, and D? There's not S, P, and D up there, but there's actually parts of the periodic table that are going to show you S, P, and D. So let's check it out. If I do a real quick, crappy sketch of the periodic table, your periodic table looks like this. Okay, real quick, quick, crappy little sketch. Now, you notice I left off the F down here, the, the block down there, that's F, we don't care about F. Those guys down there at the bottom, by, 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 the head, by, by your head, bud, those, I don't care about, okay? Um, all of the ones that are white letters are man-made, but those down there are just getting beyond our definitions for how things work. The bigger your atom gets, the less it follows the rules that we're about to talk about. So. The ones on top of the periodic table, these work great for, and that's where we're going to stick. Now let's check out what we have. Column all the way to the left, columns one and two, where H at the top is and BE at the top. This is your S block. If you have an electron that you're counting through, if you're reading through that line, you are reading the S shape, which is a sphere. All the way to the right over here. This is your P block. Anytime you count through there, that's going to be your P shape, except for helium. Helium's kind of weird. It's all by itself. It has its own rules. So helium's over there by itself. It has its own rules. Don't worry about helium. Helium sometimes acts like it's there with hydrogen. Sometimes acts like it's over there with helium. Hydrogen and helium we'll talk about specifically, but they just kind of, but since there's only two of them, they kind of follow a little bit different rules. So that's why I put that little line there. And then the last shape is all this stuff in the middle from group three through group 12. This is your D block. D block down there in the middle. Okay? So we have two out of three things we have. One is my energy level, which is what line I'm on. S is my shape. It can be S, P, or D, depending on where I'm at on the periodic table. And then the last thing is how many electrons you have. And I, for the first one, I'm going to give you, I'm just going to say, there's one electron. Okay, so let's look at this. First energy level, where are we at on the periodic table? Where's the first energy level up there? The top line. Okay. S shape, where are we at? All the way to the all the way to the left. Everybody see it? All the way to the left. And we're only going to count one. 
What element is this on the board? You already said it. Hydrogen. First row, S block, one, hydrogen. Now, what, ha what would happen if instead of that, I put one, S, two? First row, S block. Now we go one, two. Now, I told you this one was kind of weird. If I'm reading the book, I'm going to start on the left. I'm going to read the whole top line. The only other thing I got to read on the top line is H and then H E. Everybody see that? Even though you have to read all the way across the other side, it's still the only other thing on that line. Before I can go to the second line, I got to read everything on the first line. So 1S2 is going to be the electron configuration for helium. There are two electrons in helium. They are both in the first energy level and in the S shape. Rock and roll. All right, let's go on down the page. So whenever you read a book, you always start at the top on the left. So everything that I write, every electron configuration that I write is going to begin with what number? Go ahead. 1S. Every electron configuration you write always will always begin 1S because we always start at the top, which is 1, and we always start on the left, which is S. Now, let's try to do Lithium, Li. So we're going to start at the top. We're going to read 1s, and we're going to read the whole top line. How many atoms are on the whole top line? Two. Two. Give you a little hint here. S can never be bigger than two. Look at the S block. How wide is it? Two. S can never be bigger than two. Make sense? If you stop at the one, it can be one, but it can never be bigger than two. All right. Now, are we done with the first row? Is there anything else on the first row I need to talk about? I hear some, I hear some mumbled nose. That sounds good to me. So if I'm done with the first row, where am I going? All the way to the, well, not yet. I got to go back to the, the left. So we're going to go to the what row? The second row. What is my shape all the way to the left? Very good. Remember this block right here. Remember this. Your shape all the way to the left is S. And we're going to lithium. How many, how many do we have to count to get to lithium? If I'm all the way to the left, how many do I have to count to get to lithium? One. And I'm done. Take it a step further. Stop me if, you, if I do anything, if I write anything, you got to holler. And folks at home too, feel free to unmute yourself. If I write anything that you don't understand, holler and stop. Me. Okay? So let's, let's take a step further. We are already talking about oxygen. Let's try oxygen. So this is with you. Let's do oxygen. TJ, oh, God, I gotta get out of the habit of saying people's names. You told us earlier, we always gonna start with what? What S? To get to, is oxygen on the first row? Is oxygen on the first row? No, no so we're gonna go all the way through it. One S, two. Let's go back to the left. Now, instead of the first row, we're on the second row. What's my shape? All the way to the left. S. Is oxygen in the S block on the second row? No. So I'm going to go all the way through the S block, which is how many? Look at the second row S block. We have lithium and what? Just say the symbol if you don't know the name. BE, beryllium. How many do we have in 2S? Two. Now, where do we go next? 
is there still more to read on the second row? Go ahead. I hear you. I hear you kind of saying, "I holler it out." Is there is this yes or no? Is there still more to read on the second row? Yes. Okay, so we still have more to read on the second row. But now we've left that S block and we've skipped across that empty space that says of the elements. And now we're in the what block? P, very good. Now we got to count. What's the first thing in the P block? B, boron. Second thing, carbon, nitrogen. Nitrogen. nitrogen, nitrogen. I'm about to write two people what? Four. Pick and ties, light and fast. Now, anytime you can do this, you can always double check yourself. How many, how many electrons, before we even started doing this, how many electrons did we say a neutral atom of oxygen had? Which is eight. Let's see if we have eight electrons up here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. We did it right. Go bigger. All right, let's go to. Uh, Let's go to silicon. Make us some, make us some uh, rubbery plastic, or making things move faster. Have silicon uh, spray like WD-40 type stuff. All right, so let's go to silicon, and we always begin. Left, left. Always left, always on top, which is. No, nah, you don't. You can't jump through row three. If you're reading the book, you can't start on the third row. You always begin. I hear people whispering it. One S. Am I read? Am I reading the whole one S row? Sure am. One S. Two. Next. Two S. Am I going through that row or that that little column there? What's the most two S can ever be? Two. Next. Not the three yet. You still have some more two to read. Two P. Now count your uh, count all the way across P. Very good. Good job, Ashley. All right. I have to go back and bleep that out. All right. Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, two P six. All right. I told you S could never be bigger than two. Guess what? P can never be bigger than six. Rock and roll. We're at the end of the second row. Where are we going? You say you don't know. Very good. Third row. What shape? Very good. How wide is it? Next. Three P. Is silicon in 3P? It sure is. We got a cap to it. Aluminum, silicon. Double check ourselves. How many electrons do we need? We need 14 plus count them. Two, three, four, plus six is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Only one more wrinkle left, but before I get to that wrinkle, I want to make sure I got everybody. Anybody at home? Speak up. All right. I'm All right. good. Thank you, Tobias. I got to turn Biden out of the movie. I'm sorry. Goodness gracious. The word of God came down. All right. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, so so let's let's throw our one wrinkle in, okay? So let's do titanium. Where are we gonna begin? Here, look, look. Here's what's really cool about this. 
It is always the same pattern. The only thing that changes is what? The, um, the A and B well, we'll get there eventually. You're jumping ahead. Good job. The only thing that changes, look at the ones we've done so far. They've all kind of been the same. The only thing that was different is where you stop. Okay. If you're counting through all of these, you're going to have all of these. The only thing that's going to change is how you write the last one. Make sense? We put, we put 3P2 because silicon is right there, 2 into 3P. The only thing that changes, if it was aluminum, AL, instead of 3P2, we would have written 3P. Go ahead. Now, if it was aluminum, instead of 3P2, we would have written 3P1. If it was phosphorus, P, instead of 3P2, we would have written 3P3. Am I cool? All right, so let's go to titanium. Titanium, and get your, get your ring made out of titanium if you're a cool, you know, tough guy. I don't need to wear no silver or gold. I want a titanium ring. Arr. Or you just get tattooed like Whatever. All right. Let's rock and roll. How are we starting? Let's go down the line. I'm going to point to you and I'm call your name because I don't get in trouble. Tell me, where I'm, tell me what I'm about to write. Now you've got to finish one S. Very good. You with me? Excellent. I'll give you a hint. Look, hey. It's always the same. The only thing that changes is where you end. Okay, so let's stop there. You got me. To 2S2, BE. What's the next spot I'm going to read after BE? Anybody? B. What row are we in? Two. What shape am I in? Okay. Am I going all the way through? Yes. So? Very good. Very good. Excellent. Four, S, two. Excellent. All right. Now I'm, I, I, I would go back there, but this is where it gets a little wonky. Okay. This is one little spot that's going to break the rule that I told you. Because what would you expect to come next? What let what number? Two. No, no, no. What number? What row? You would expect 4D to come next, okay? But here's the deal. S and P have nice, simple shapes. D has a much more complicated shape. So take the amount of energy it takes to run this track and the amount of energy it takes to run this track, it's pretty negligible. The amount of energy it takes to run this Obstacle course, it takes a whole lot more. And so actually the, the electrons, since they have to spend so much energy making this strange shape, they actually will go closer, a little bit closer to the nucleus. What, which of our three things tells us the distance from the nucleus? The big, the big number, the letter, or the thing? The first number. So instead of 4D, D is always one energy level behind. So if you're D and you're on the fourth row, instead of four, you are three. And D was correct. We're going to titanium. So we go scandium, titanium, bang. OK. 
Chicken tires line fives. That's the only wrinkle. Everything else is what row am I on? What block am I in? How many do I have to go across to get to where I want to go? Beautiful. Okay, let's do one more hard one and I'm gonna let you practice the rest of the day. Let's make it big. Now, I told you we're not gonna worry with those down there at the bottom of the periodic table. So the biggest atom that I'm gonna be able to ask you about is number 56, Barry. Actually, number 57, Lantham. Well, no, 57 is going to be weird. So number 56, barium, because 57 has got that star on it, which means it's actually where all those things are down at the bottom with the stars. So 56, barium is actually the biggest atom I can ever ask you about. I probably won't ask you about it. But in, in mostly the test, if I or practice, most things will be on those top three rows with a handful that go through the D block. So let's go, let's go to uh, selenium. Anybody know where you could find selenium in your house? In your bathroom. Some of us. Not all of us will find, find selenium in our bathroom. But some of us will probably, some of us in this room probably could find selenium in your bathroom. Any guesses? It's a shampoo. Selenium sulfide, SES, is in anti-dandruff shampoo. They say like Selsun Blue, that's where the Selsun name came from, selenium. Make sense? Okay. Selenium in your shampoo, it prevents you from flaking up, keeps your, keeps your, your head nice and uh, flake-free. Okay. So let's carry on. Let's do selenium. Okay. Let's do it quick. Okay. Because we know, we know how, this, how this story goes, right? We've already done it a bunch. We know how these first few lines are always going to read. We're going to read that first line. What are we going to say? One has two. We're going to go to the next line. We're going to say two has two. Then we're going to skip the gap and read the other side of two, which is going to be two P six. Then we're going to go to the next line. We're going to say we just did it. The same as before. Yeah, everybody, everybody with me? You get done with the second line, you go to the third line. You go all the way to the left, which is the S block. We count two, three, S, two. Skip the gap. Three, P, six. Back to the beginning. Four, S, two. Now our strange one. Three, B. Very good. Now, three, B. And we got to do what we did before because we're we'll be stopping in the D block. Very good. We're not stopping in the D block. And so we got to count all the way across it. And you're exactly right. If you count all the way across the D block, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Ten. Five and five. So S is always going to be the biggest it'll ever be is what number? Two. P is the, big, the, the biggest P will ever be is six, and the biggest D will ever be is ten. Now, let's see if I don't screw you up here. What's next? Four P. Very good. He, he didn't let him get self get confused because he remembered that P was normal. And you're on the what row? Fourth, Fourth row. P shape. We're going to selenium, so we go gallium, germanium, arsenic, selenium. Four. When you drop your pencil, walk off the stage. You feel good about yourself. Now we can always double check. How many do we have for selenium? How many electrons? 34. 34. 4 plus 10 is 14, plus 2 is 16. Plus six is 22, plus two is 24, plus six is 30, plus two is 32, plus two is 34. So we've told the story about every single electron up there. All right, your practice for today is pretty much just 
on a piece of paper or on a, on a document somewhere that you can share with me. You could probably just type it in if you want to not be fancy. Um, to do the, the electronic configurations of the ones I'm asking you about. I got 15 and look, we've already done the first two and we did seven. So we already did one, two, and seven. If you want me to go back to some examples, I'll be glad to. Feel good? If you want to jump on tomorrow's practice, tomorrow it takes it one step further with the shorthand. The all shorthand electronic configuration is, is instead of starting at one, you start at the last noble gas. Noble gas is group 18. So instead of starting at one, you like start at the closest noble gas, helium, neon, argon, krypton, and then go from there. So it's kind of like picking up reading a book that you've already started. Questions? Any questions at home? All right, guys, I'm shutting down the Zoom in and I'll post this video so everybody can see it nice and pretty and refer back to it. Practice, practice, practice.